I am standing on a beautiful morning in the old churchyard in Clevedon at St Andrew's Church, right on the edge of the Bristol Channel. And um, I spent the morning with 120 little children in our uh, holiday club, and that's my badge that I haven't taken off. Uh, one thing that is certain in life is death. And some years ago, I made a video about this very churchyard because God sent me here to answer some questions uh, that he told me there would be a stranger here who had many questions. And I came here. You can see that video on our website, a link to it on our website. But um, this afternoon in this very churchyard, we are actually burying the body of uh, one of our church members, an old man who's lived a full life. Uh, and we will be celebrating his, his life and then laying his body to rest. And I want you to come up here because um, several days ago, well, about a week ago, we had some visitors from New Zealand and we walked through this churchyard and along the pathway which goes along by the Bristol Channel. It's a beautiful walk. And I was telling this lady, Robin, about my father. You see, if you're a Christian and you know that you're going to die, it isn't actually a sad thing because you believe in the resurrection of Jesus and you know that you will be united um, in eternity with all the other believers, with the myriads who have trusted Jesus over the centuries. And I was telling her about my father. He, um, he was an agnostic. And from the time that I became a believer, we argued, we talked, but he shut his mind firmly to any um, understanding of my faith and what Jesus meant to me. And I prayed for him. And I said to Charles one day, I'm praying for him and I've asked the Lord that he won't die until he finds faith in Jesus. And Charles said rather wryly, well, I think he'll live forever. <laughs> because he was very stubborn. And um, he had a stroke when he was in his 80s and he came to live with us. And we were living in a hotbed uh, of Christianity in a small community. And uh, so he was in it day and night. And he talked to one of the older members of the community regularly, but they made no more headway with him than I did. He just couldn't get it. Um, didn't really believe in God until he went to stay with my sister in South Africa. Actually, I think he was running away. And he thought, uh, he thought he'd get away from God running to South Africa. But he fell over in the Kruger National Park. And uh, he hurt himself, shook himself up very badly. And actually thought he was going to die. And facing death is a reality. What happens? You can, you can dismiss God all your life. But you get to the point of death and you've got to say, what next? And that's what he did. And uh, he said, God, if you are real, then, then get me back to England and don't let me die here. And uh, the place where he uttered that prayer, because it was a prayer, uh, filled with the presence of God. And he was so terrified, he grabbed the sheet off the bed and hid under it. And he heard a voice, I don't know whether it was out loud or whether it was internal, saying, Stanley, you're a stubborn old man, but I love you. And he was so sure that God had spoken to him that he got my sister to get him on a plane back to England and he told me this story when I picked him up. I said, okay, Dan, well, what are you going to do about it? And he said, I want to see, he nominated a man called Francis Pym, an older man. He said, I want to see Francis tomorrow. I want to sort this out. And he did. When I picked him up from the place where he had been talking to Francis, I said, well, what happened? And he looked at me straight in the eye and said, my sins have been forgiven. Now, he was 82, I think, at that point. And, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't become a churchgoer. He, he read the New Testament from cover to cover instead of his normal cowboy books, which was quite fun. Um, uh, but when he died, he died with full assurance that Jesus had received him because his sins had been forgiven. And uh, it was wonderful for us to know that we, we knew where he was. Just before Easter, we had visitors from New Zealand staying with us. And we took them for a walk along the cliffs in Clevedon. Well, hardly cliffs, coastal footpath. 
And uh, because we passed the church in at St Andrews, uh, which I mentioned last time I made a video, we began to talk about our fathers and the way they had responded to Jesus very late in life. Her situation was this. Her father had resisted uh, Jesus all his life, but at some point he was in hospital and had a heart attack. Now, because he was in hospital, they were able to resuscitate him very quickly. But it was a near-death experience, and when she asked him about it, he, he was angry, he, he said there was nothing, it was blackness, but she in her heart felt that, the, that he had actually seen or was aware of heavenly realities. Eight years later, he was, he was dying, and um, this time he kept pointing to the corner of the room, and when she questioned him, he was able to tell her that he'd seen a gate, and he had, I believe, seen Jesus beckoning to him. Um, she then asked the Lord that she would be able to see what he saw, and she suddenly saw like a portal in, into, uh, into heavenly places. But she said to her father, you, you've been welcomed into heaven, but you need to make that decision as to whether you will put your hand in Jesus and you will go, because no one can make that for you. And he squeezed her hand as much to say, I will, or, you know, kind of indicated, you know, if you say so. Um, and uh, uh, shortly after that, uh, she was traveling home and suddenly began to weep and weep with the presence of the Holy Spirit upon her. And she kind of knew in her heart that he was making that decision. And shortly after that, he died. Um, God has individual ways of reaching every single person. But when you have prayed, he will answer those prayers.